grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me again today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. I am Ambassador Chantrell Davis. Today is January the 10th of 2018. It is 11.04 a.m. Central Time. Let's come together in one accord in prayer and go before the Father boldly that we may obtain mercy this day. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are alive for such a time as this. Father God, we thank you that you purposed us for this day, Father God, for such this time, such in this season, Father God. We thank you that we awake because you sustain us, Father God. You are unchangeable, unprecedented, and exalted forever, Father God. Who is like unto you? Be lifted higher this day, Father God. Be lifted up in and through us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for we present ourselves as living sacrifices this day, Father God. We thank you, Father God that you are our way maker, the strengthener of our soul, the lifter up of our head, the keeper, the bishop, and the shepherd of our soul, Father God. We thank you that you uphold us with your righteous right hand, Father God. You are our pavilion, Father God, and we are hid in your secret place, Father. You are loving, good, and kind, and gracious, Father. We thank you, Father God, that you bless us in spite of ourselves, Father God. We think you are better than we deserve, Father, for we know that it is your grace and your mercy, and we lift you up this day, Father God. Be exalted, Father God. We decree and declare all things by Christ Jesus this day, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you, Father God, being the speaker this day, Father God, that I yield to the speaker of this house that is the Holy Spirit, Father God. I decree and declare that his words will come forth unhindered and unchecked by any outside force, Father God. I decree and declare penetration of every word, Father God. I shake loose the heavenly realm, Father God, every evil prin principality, Father God, and I decree penetration of the word, penetration of prayer, Father God, and penetration of every godly intent, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we do this by the authority of the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you have purposed me for this day, Father God. I thank you that I'm filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, Father God, that I'm strengthened by your might, Father God, according to your glorious power, Father God, unto long sufferance with patience, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you have purposed my mouth this day, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you have given me right word in due season, Father God, the mouth of the wise, the wise, the tongue of the learned, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, and I submit my tongue to the Holy Spirit, for you said the tongue no man can tame, but the Holy Spirit is the great tamer, and we thank you, Father God, I yield to the speaker of this house, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare the blood of Jesus over the ears of every listener right now this day, Father God, not just this day, but every place this word is heard from day to day, Father God, I decree and declare cultivation of their hearts and ears, Father God, I decree and declare penetration of the word, Father God, I decree and declare, Father, great receptivity, Father God. I decree and declare that there would be fruit, Father God, and that the fruit that comes forth will remain, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the engrafted word that is able to save their soul, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I come against every foul thing that has set its will against this ministry, our, our, our well-being, Father God, the state of mind, our health, Father God, our families, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I return their own ways into their own bosom, Father God. I send back the confusion that they are, Father God, into their bosom. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood, Father God. I thank you that you fight against those who fight against us and you contend with those who contend with us, Father. I thank you that your word tells me that you see it a righteous thing to grant tribulation to those who trouble us, Father God. And we thank you that you are faithful and just to your word, Father God. We thank you that you hasten and, and watch over your word to perform it, Father God. We thank you that it will not return unto you void, Father God. For you are our great defender. You are our champion, Father God. You are the one who keeps and guides us, Father God. And we trust our lives to your words, your provisions, and your ways, Father God, and your path, Father God. And we surrender, Father God. We call all things that are every high thing that exalts, exalts itself against your true knowledge, Father God. We bring it away and we lead it captive. And we teach it to submit to Christ, Father God. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in this world, Father God. And we surrender to your will and your ways. And we believe your report, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that there is no other salvation and no other name but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. And in doing that, Father, I decree and declare, Father God, that those who you have ordained to be brought into the body of Christ this day, Father God, that everyone who is such as should be saved, that you have ordained, Father God, shall come into the kingdom this day, Father God. I'll cast down spirits of shame, spirits of oppression, Father God, and any high thought or contrary thought that would keep those from coming to you this day, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I bind it, Father God, and I send it where Jesus would. I stop their activity and I arrest all activity, Father God. And I also decree and declare retroactive payment, Father God, for every soul and everything that has been lost in time, Father. In the name of Jesus, for you are the great redeemer of time. Father, I bless you and I thank you that you have heard these words this day, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you hasten to perform them, Father God. I bless you, Father God, and I trust you and I yield to you this day. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you and I pray. Amen. Today's message, let me get this before me. Uh, 
I'd like to say it's a mighty one, but I don't think I I'd have been given none that wasn't mighty because they're timely. Um, he's just really trying to get the body of Christ in alignment because there is not there's there's not only so much that he's trying to get to us; it's a lot he's trying to get through us. And if we're not prepared to hold and to carry, not only to hold the glory, to carry the glory, to distribute, if we're in selfishness and self-willedness and presumptuousness and that we can't be moved up on with compassion at any moment to give and to move and to say what he tells us to do, we can't be used. Um, which is why this message right here, I think is powerful and very beautiful. The name of this message is power under will. Keep your bodies under. Maturity equals the son of God. You know, I just put some parentheses there. But it's power under will. And I put in parentheses, maturity. Excuse me, maturity equals sons of God. Keep your body under. And so I'm going to sum that up. Power under will. Keep your body under. I'm going to start right off into the scripture. Uh, because there's a lot of uh, practical examples he's given me concerning this. I'm going to start with Luke 22, verse 42. And uh, I would suggest that you read the whole this, read the message version so you get the entitled uh, whole message, but I have to stay on point for time's sake. Uh, Luke 22, 42, saying, Father, if thou, and this is with him in the uh, Garden of Gethsemane, uh, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I'm going to read it again in the Amplified. Saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup of divine wrath from me. He took the cup of wrath on him. I want y'all to catch this. Yet not my will, but always yours be done. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to read this again in the message version. He pulled away from them about a stone's throw, because he was with the disciples. He knelt down and prayed, Father, remove this cup from me. But please, not what I want. What do you want? At once, at once, immediately, okay? Catch this. At once, an angel from heaven was at his side, strengthening him. He prayed all the harder and sweat wrung from him like drops of blood poured off his face. Do you understand that when he said, please, because he knew the kind of things he was going to suffer, okay? The pain. The humiliation, the nudity, the, the the forsaking by the disciples when they ran, the hurt. Um, but the moment he said, not my will, but thy will, an angel came to strengthen him through it. Like it is with us. I want y'all to stay tuned for this whole message because you don't want to miss it. That when we yield to anything that we have the power to make stop. <laughs> when you have the power to make it stop. But you bear through it because the Bible tells us that for the glory, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. The joy that was set before him was the redemption of all mankind back to the father, that they have the right to be restored, to walk in fellowship with him once again. And us being saved and drawn out of the pits of hell and back restored unto our maker, our creator, our loving father, that joy caused him to endure his cross. And he said, not my will, but thy will. Because he had the power to deliver himself. And I'm going to show you over and over again. He could have easily just stopped it. We would all been doomed. But he could have just stopped it. It's another thing when you have to go through and take it. But when you've been put in a place of power. When you have a power and you can stop it. When somebody's doing you wrong. Lying on you. Cheating on you. Treating you bad. Neglecting you. Rejecting you. And you can just withdraw yourself from it. Even that's a form of power. That's some of the practical stuff I'm going to give y'all as examples. That you have the power to remove yourself from it. But it is the strengthening through it. Okay? Power under will. You have the power to remove yourself. You have the power to stop it. But is it the will of God for you to stop it? Okay? Catch that. Grace nugget. The power. Catch this. He had power to remove himself. The power could not save us. It was the act of putting under the will, putting his power under the will of God and going to the cross. That's how we got salvation. The power of Jesus didn't save us. The surrendering of him to the will of God did. Power under will. Okay? Let's go to the next section. No power but from above. 
I'm going to show y'all the many examples he had to deliver himself. These are examples. Because I'm going to tell you what he showed me. John 10, uh, John 19, 10 through 11. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have the power to crucify thee? Hey, I, let me stay on course. I want to say something half cocked. And have power to release thee? This is like some of these judges. I got power. No. Oh, the judgment is about to come up on the court systems. Because the court system, I got to say this, the court system was established by righteousness. So perverse judges are about to get tore up. It's going to hit their house. And nobody's going to be able to stop it because it's the most high God. All power's in his hand. Okay. Verse 11. Jesus answered, thou couldest have no power. Thou couldn't have no power. And that means even any, every, any people that's tormenting you. The Lord is using it to bring something out of you. He gives it. He, he allows it for a reason. But it ain't going to go on forever. Jesus answered, thou couldn't have no power at all against me. Huh? Except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivereth me unto thee hath the greater sin. So he's speaking about the people who turned him over. But the power was given for he from heaven for him to be turned over. He surrendered to the will. He, he let Pilate know, you ain't got no power but what was given from under above. And y'all need to understand it's the same with us. Sometimes, every, not, not, I'm going to get on some, some of y'all trials is because of y'all. Y'all fighting God. Y'all want to say it's the devil, no, it's y'all. You doing it. You fighting his will and you getting whipped. You getting a spiritual whipping because he's trying to turn you around. But then, of course, we know the enemy comes. He, he not going to just lay down when you're growing. He want to stop you before you come to maturity. Keep you in selfishness and confusion and division and competition and strife. I'm going to read it again in the Amplified. So Pilate said to him, you do not speak to me? Like, you ain't speaking to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you? And I have authority to crucify you? Say, of course, Sean. Jesus answered, you would have no authority over me at all if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the sin of guilt of the one who handed me over is greater than you. So the one that betrayed him, that sin was greater. But the power was given to Pilate to do what he did from above. But why? It is the will of God being fulfilled. Power under will. Let's go to the next part to show that Jesus could have delivered himself. And I'm going to tell you how this applies to us. But I got to lay this foundation. Twelve legions of angels he could have commanded. Yet he placed his power under the will of the Father. He could have ended it. We've been all doomed. But he could have just stopped it. He laid his life down. He laid it down because he could have stopped it. The Lord, Jesus, God wouldn't have forced it. Do y'all understand that? Matthew 26. 52 through 54. Then said Jesus unto him, put up again thy sword in his place. We know that Peter, you know, hit the man's ear. Uh, unto his place. For all they that uh, take the sword shall perish with the sword. He said, thinkest thou not? He said, do you not know? I can now pray to the Father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. 12 legions, okay? Legions is a mighty great multitude by itself. 12 legions. But how then, this is the key, but how then shall the scripture be fulfilled that thus it must be? Same with you. Because a lot of us like to say, as Christ is, so are we in this world. That's true. That also means the things he did, we, gonna, we should do in this world. How many of you, by removing yourself from the suffering, by removing yourself from the persecution, by removing yourself from those who treat you ill, by removing yourself from those who do you wrong, holding out against them, how, how then will the scripture be fulfilled? There are people you are ordained to reach. And without the process of the development, you will not reach them. Thinkest thou not we can't pray and be delivered? Oh, you can pray. The good, acceptable, and perfect will. The good, the acceptable, and the perfect. You can have the good. You can have the acceptable. Because you can pray things out of things. And you, or you can have his perfect will. Your power under his will. Yeah, we have power. Your power you put under his will for the fulfillment of scripture. I'm going to read that again and amplify it. 
Then Jesus said unto him, put your sword back in its place. For all those who habitually, habitually, habitually draw the sword, I'm stay on course because I can go on that, will die by the sword. Do you think it, I can, I'm not, I cannot appeal? That's, that's very interesting. You think I cannot appeal to my father and he will immediately provide me with more than 12 legions of angels. How then will scripture be fulfilled? That it must happen this way. It must happen this way. Some of what you're going through, I want y'all to hear me. It must happen that way. Quit praying to get out of it. Put your will, your power, because you can pray and you, you can get out of it because you can apply principle. That's all the people in the world is doing, apply principle. But you have to, part of being like Jesus and becoming the son of God, because he was the first. That's why he went from the only begotten son to the firstborn of many brethren. Y'all notice that, oh, before his death, the only begotten son to the firstborn, the firstborn of many brethren. How shall scripture be fulfilled if you don't go through? We want to say that as Christ is, so are we in this world when it's the good stuff. But we got to look at how he was in this world when it comes to what he suffered, of the, what he suffered, his passion. Okay? The will. Now we're going to get, I'm going to get some of y'all. <laughs> I guess I got to know it myself first. The will of God concerning you. Remember, we got authority. We got power in the name of Jesus. Power. We must put under will. Keep under your body. First Thessalonians 5, 12 through 18. I want y'all to pay close, close attention to this. For this is the will of God concerning you. First Thessalonians 5, 12 through 18. And I beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. Know them which labor among you. You got to know them. This is an intimate relationship. Y'all got isolation? No, that's not God. Among you. And are over you in the Lord. And know them that are over you in the Lord. And uh, over you in the Lord. And admonish you. Know those who admonish you. Excuse me. It's tea. This is the will. Verse 13. And to esteem them highly in love for their work's sake. Este Do y'all see anybody esteem anybody high? Everybody pushing themselves. Now you got the clicks. Even in the body of Christ. Boy, I watch them all day. They click. If somebody agrees with what they say and you don't just jump in, you're pushed out. So everybody says the same thing. They click up. They don't share other people's ministries. It's all about theirs. You got to watch people like that. You don't see them sharing nobody else's stuff. I question whether they be in Christ and they should examine whether they be in Christ too because he tells you it ain't all about you. And even though you are a minister, it still ain't all about you. You should... Let me get back on course. 13, and to esteem them highly in love for their work's sake. You esteem them high just for they, because they labor in the, they are co-laborers in Christ. And be, be at peace among yourselves. Be at peace. How much peace do y'all see in the body of Christ? Like we said, for this is the will of God concerning you. You put your power, power to what? We're going to use a practical example, to remove yourself, to eject them, to reject them, to cut them off. You got the power to do that. Is it the will of God? Because development springs forth from that pressure. Development springs forth from the rejection. Development springs forth from your long suffering. Because most, I've said this, that most people love with their knowledge. Just like most people minister with their knowledge rather than their heart. I see people that quote scriptures. Quote, but you know when it's in them. Nothing that you have not spent enough time with or experience that can get down in you. So therefore, when you're praying for love to come forth in your heart, he's going to have hard people around you to love until it gets in you. You got to stay. Because when you're only trying to do it up here, your mind changes when your emotion change. So therefore, your power will never be put under your will. The moment that emotion swings, you're going to swing to the left and you're going to be gone. Let's go to verse 14. Now, we exhort you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly. This is his will. This is the will. Warn those that are unruly. Which means if we see people in the body of Christ 
drinking, smoking, hooking, going to clubs, going to church, then going to worldly concerts, taking pictures with homosexuals, kicking it, lifting them up, everything contrary, fornicating, shacking up, gossiping, lying, clicking up, hypocrisy, favoritism, all of it's evil. Warn them. Comfort the feeble-minded. There's some people who ain't quite right in their mind. Why would he say that? If if every feeble-minded person was a demon, why did he tell us to comfort a feeble-minded? You know, I'm gonna have to dissect that, dissect that word feeble-minded. I didn't, and so I don't like to do things because I'm looking at it. A feeble-minded. Support the weak. Support people who are weak. They have to grow. And those who are stronger have to support them until they grow strong too. Gird them until they strengthen. Be patient toward all men. I'm still going on the list. Verse 15. See that none render none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever, 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 that's continually, follow that which is good both among yourselves and all men. That means follow that is good for people that's in the Christ and out of the body of Christ. Do good unto all men and don't return evil for evil. Another practical example, power under will. I done had a lot of dirt done to me. And I'm not going to defend myself because when they get there, he going to lay it all out. All going to be exposed. Every lie told, every dividing tongue. But I, I pray that the people make, not just me, anybody, that if you've divided and you've lied, you make it right before you leave her. Don't let them people go and you done, you done caused that rift. Uh, I'm going to keep warning y'all. Okay? Verse 16. I hope y'all want y'all to read all this again because this is the will of God concerning you. Rejoice evermore. That means that when other people's blessings coming through to rejoice with them too. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Not for everything. In everything. Even when you're going through something bad, it's something else you can look at his goodness and look around and thank him for. For this is the will of God concerning you. Uh -huh. Power under will. Oh, I ain't done. Oh, oh. I may read it again, Christian Contact and the Amplified, but I don't think I need to because I think that was pretty clear. But I will paste this uh, in the blog. Now, we're going to get to this part because this is also power under will. He's telling you his will for you. And we got scripture all day that says Christ was our example. And we are living epistles seen and read of men. The Lord has warned even for contrary walking Christians that the name of God is blasphemed through you. They see your contrariness. They see your lying. They see your gossiping. They see you talking about people. They see you dressing terribly. They see you wild. They see you uncontrolled in your temper and emotion. They see you clicking up. They see you dressed hookerish even on the even in the pulpit. They like they know different than we are. So they blaspheme the name of Jesus through you because they see you. That is a that's a woe. Let's go down to. We are as he is in this world. We are as Christ says in this world. We must do as he did in this world. People want to put that off. We want to say we as he is when it comes to the authority. Because we have all the authority he has. And he said greater works we're going to do because he's going to the father. And the same word of God who, Lord, the word was in the beginning was the word was with God and was God. He came and dwelt among men. He came again in us so anybody baptized in the holy spirit you are the word and the flesh all over again and the lord said that to me audibly i told y'all he stopped me and said it and you are my word and you won't return void we are as christ is in this world we must do as he did in this world first peters 2 20 through 25 for what glory is it if we, if when ye be buffeted, okay, what glory is it? If when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently. You did something wrong, you're going to get buffeted. Shut up and take it. That's what he's saying. But if when you do well, when you do well, Christ suffer for doing well. But when you do well, you suffer for it and you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. Power under will. Power under the will of God. Verse uh, 21, for even here unto were you called. He said, for even here unto were you called. You was called unto his suffering. 
because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye shall follow his steps. Power under the will of God. Who did no sin? He did no sin. He did no sin. He did no sin. And he's covered ours, okay? But we don't habitually walk in it. We don't use that grace of, of, of the cover sin as an occasion to do and say he covered it all anyway. You're going to find yourself in hell. You get to somebody said you're going to wake up dead. That's waking up dead. That's waking up dead. You wake up in hell, you don't woke up dead. Who did no sin, neither was guile, neither was guile, neither was guile found in his mouth. Guile is intentional deceit, intentional lying, conniving dividers. And I'm telling you, it's a hurdle. And then they raise their hand and say, bless the Lord. Oh, whoa, y'all better stop. You better repent. Verse 23, who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. Like he said, as he was, so are we. As he did, so should we. When somebody revile you, you don't answer back. You ain't got to defend yourself. Because believe it or not, that's pride. Because you feel like you need to defend yourself. That's pride. Defending yourself is pride. When he suffered, he threatened not. Oh, you know that's people do wrong. You don't know who you messing with. You do that. We know the Bible says, touch not that I know it. We don't have to say it. They better hope they know it. You don't know who you dealing with. You got to throw y'all, y'all, y'all. You don't know who you messing with. <laughs> when he suffered, he did not threaten. Which means you ain't supposed to be threatening when you suffer. But he committed himself to him that judges righteously. He's the righteous judge. Let them, the Lord, see everything they've done. He see it all. Now, you got a right to pray righteous prayers. I'm going to pray righteous prayers. But I'm not going to try to get you back. We don't curse. But I will return into the bosom the words of your own mouth. Give the fruit of their own lips. But I'm not going to speak it against you. And plus, the fruit of your own lips is going to hit you anyway. Uh, he revowed not again. He, when he suffered, he threatened not. He committed himself to who is the judge righteously. He is our righteous judge. Who his, own, who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we being dead in sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed, for ye were sheep going astray, but now you have returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. That is Jesus. Power on the wheel. We go see uh, 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 verse uh, Corinthians. Excuse me. This section is keep the power of the body under the wheel. And this is part of what Paul practiced. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, this is the warning. Catch this. Keep, keep it under the will. Keep any power and everything contrary under the will of God. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You can preach and be a castaway. Okay? Self-willedness, presumptuousness, getting into gossip, getting in clicks, your uh your your why behind what you say and do. It's people who do anything to get ahead, to have their name uttered, to get to fit in, to be next to the, the, the pastor, or next to the big man. They'll do anything to fit in. When he's called us unto relationship, and many people I've said this, many people will lay down uh, a relationship for the power. When maintaining a, relation, maintaining a relationship, power automatically comes. The Lord wants fellowship and communion with us to talk to us and walk with us like he did in the beginning. And, of course, that's where it's going to be again and should be here. As he is, so are we in this world. He was submitted to the will of God. He was tempered. He was well balanced. He was wise and obedient. He was selfless. He was compassionate and full of mercy. Where's the mercy? He was loving. He was kind. He was strong and fierce. Make no mistake, he was fierce with those he needed to be fierce with. And it was righteous. So for those of y'all to think, when the Lord's bringing forth a rebuke through me and anybody else like me, I'm not even going to defend myself. Every mouth that's been said against me, he didn't dealt with. It's a done deal. My eyes and my gaze are straight. And if you are a minister, don't be worried about what other people are saying to you. You say what the Lord tells you to say. 
Because that's what he's going to hold you responsible for. He will confound you before them. You won't be afraid of their faces. He with me and he for me. And no one will successfully be against me. He said they're going to gather against me, but it won't be because of him. And what he's going to call them to do is fall for my sake when they do. And you better know that about you. Excuse me. Is that you don't have to defend yourself. You keep your gaze straight and you say just what the Lord tells you to say. Because I'm telling y'all, so even delivering messages that he didn't give for the wrong reason. Only what you do for Christ will last. That means only what he told you to do. Only what the spirit led you to do. Only what you were ordained to do. Not, not stuff you created with your presumptuousness and your own self-willedness. That's not work for him. The work you did for him will last. And the work you did for him will count. The rest of them going to burn up. He was strong at first. He was gentle and he was tender. All at once. He was yielding. He was meek. He was teachable. Yet he held all power. That's the key. Yet he held all power. This is the key. He was all these things. And all power was and still is in his hand. Until all of this is brought, this time of the Gentiles, this dispensation and the a redeeming of his body and all that is done, we know the scripture says at that point he will turn everything back over to the Father. Power under will. Y'all know the examples, okay, that I've given you through scriptures, okay? I want y'all to catch this. I want y'all to catch this. This is a serious thing because until you have learned to put the power you have to deliver yourself under the will of God. You may be in a church they're not treating you right. If the Lord has not told you to leave, you are there for a reason. You put the power to walk out that door under the will that he has for you to be there. And start praying, Lord, what are you drawing out of me? He, look, most people ain't even asking. When somebody have talked to you crazy and you want to go left. And you put down your, the power to respond harshly. Power under his will, because his will is for you to be gentle and not to revile back and not to answer again. Those who do you wrong and, and do foul and set traps. And then he said when he was reviled, he threatened not. When somebody do you wrong, you don't get the threatening. When somebody perceive and misunderstand you, you don't defend yourself. That's all day, every day. Yes, I can talk it because I'm living it. That's what gives experience with that word is what gives wisdom. I have experience in that. Of constantly being lied on, constantly being misunderstood, plot, scheme, plans, divide, and I will not defend myself. He got this. I'm telling y'all he got it. Keep your eyes on him and put his will above any power you have. Yes, we have power in prayer. We have power to remove ourselves. We have power to flee situations. We have power even to cause those who have done us uh, uh, wrong to push back because their own way is going to take them anyway. Your job is to walk as Christ did and do what he did. Trust God. He's able to keep you. Lay it down. And you have not grown to know Christ until you understand power under will. Because again, I say it was the, his power didn't save us. The surrendering, of, the surrendering of his power to God's will did. Because he had all power to deliver himself. And the same thing will be this world. It's going to be people that you, you're going to know you didn't grow because the Lord is going to put you over them in ways. And you're not going to be doing ill to them because of what they did to you. So you can't say you put power under will until you've had the opportunity to get back at somebody. You've had the opportunity to remove yourself. You've had the opportunity to, to return evil. You've had the opportunity to do back to somebody what they did to you. But you put it under the will of God with the knowledge of putting it under the will of God. That's his will for us. Take this message before the Lord. I pray it blessed you because it was a blessing to me. That part of the spiritual growth is putting power that we have under the will of God. Because Jesus was our example. He had all power to deliver himself at any moment. But for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And he put the will of the Father over his desire and his power to deliver himself from the suffering that he was going to have to go through for us. I thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for the messages that are to follow. God bless you. Grace be with you. And I love you all. Thank you for joining us today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach.
Grace be with you.